What's up guys and welcome to this video. This video is all about getting a great gaming PC for the autumn, which is, is of course just right next to the gaming season where all the great and uh, latest games come out. And of course we want a PC that will be able to run all these games pretty much at the highest settings but without spending a fortune. So that is the entire point of this, the PC-centric awesome rig. It is of course worth noting that there are new components that are rumoured to be coming out very shortly. However, just because there are new components, it doesn't mean that stuff in this rig is suddenly going to get worse and there is always going to be newer stuff coming out, but rest assured that the stuff in this rig will last you on the latest games at high to ultra settings for years to come. So, what's actually in this rig then? Well, the first thing is the case, and that is the new NZXT H440. It comes in a load of different colours, it's quite a nice size, it's big without being stupidly big so it's easy to build in. It looks great and it's got a nice little chamber down the bottom that you can stow all your cables away and it also houses the power supply just so it's that little bit neater and easy to get the cable management looking pretty swell to be honest. It's a good case, of course it will vary depending on your personal taste, you might not like it, but if I was going to build a PC like all the components in this rig, this is actually the case I would go for at this price point. Now the motherboard in this rig is the MSI 970 Gaming. I've gone with this just because it represents such great value for money. That's kind of what I'm going for in this entire rig anyway, but it offers SLI and Crossfire support. Um, some of the SASA speeds have been reported that they're not as good as the more expensive stuff, but that is surely to be expected. It looks good, it has all the features you're going to need, and you, it's the motherboard is the sort of thing that you know if you need to spend a lot of money on because you want all these advanced features, but for the average user this is everything you need and more, it's absolutely brilliant. Now the processor is the AMD FX8350. Now this isn't quite as good as the Intel i5, but it's a lot cheaper. It's about £50 alone just on the processor and that extra £40 we saved on the motherboard. And bearing in mind that extra money isn't going to translate into any gaming performance, What's actually the point in this rig at this price point for going for the i5? There isn't really one. It also overclocks very well and realistically there's not much more to say. It's going to be pretty perfect for gaming at this price point. Now the cooler to be used is the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 2. Now I've gone for this just because it's not the best cooler in terms of keeping temperatures really low. What it is the best at is keeping temperatures low while remaining pretty much silent. If you are going to overclock then it can still keep all your temperatures quite low, not as good as something like a dedicated water cooler or obviously a better quality and more expensive and bigger cooler, but if I was going to build a rig I would overclock it slightly or not at all, depends on how obviously gaming is, but I'd want it to be silent and it, that's exactly why I've gone for this cooler. It also represents great value for money as well. As for RAM we've gone for 8GB, so that's two 4GB sticks of Kingston Beast memory. It's clocked at 2400MHz and for this price it's pretty insane actually. It's really difficult to get decent RAM at a good price but Kingston seem to have cracked it at the moment with their Beast memory. If you look at pretty much all the rigs that I've done recently it's got Kingston Beast memory in it. It's fantastic and I would advise that you go out and get it if you're after getting some RAM. It's definitely what I would go for anyway. You won't need 16 gigabytes of it unless you're doing some heavy application like video editing, but gaming 8 gigabytes is more than you'll ever need, at least for the somewhat distant future anyway. But you can always upgrade it if you need to, very easy. Now as for the graphics card, I would go for the 280X. The 280X is a brilliant card, it'll run all your games at between 40 and 60 frames a second, and that will be at about high and ultra settings. It's not the fastest card, but it does represent great bang for your buck. At this sort of price point, it's definitely the card I would go for. Remember, you can stick another one in later in Crossfire if you think you need to. Now, the power supply I've gone for is an 850 watt XFX power supply. It's 80 plus bronze, and the reason I've gone for this rather than something that is a lower wattage is because it will be able to support the two cards in Crossfire. If you don't get a power supply that will support that now, you're probably going to regret it later when you can't upgrade. Strongly advise going for this particular power supply as although it's non-modular it doesn't really matter because you can stow all those cables away and it does represent great value for money. Now as for storage I've done something a little bit different. Rather than the traditional combo I've just gone for one big SSD and that is the Crucial MX100 500GB SSD. It's actually quite a reasonable price at least here in the UK and rather than getting a mixer, mix and match of two different storage types it's not going to cost you much more and the reason I'm saying go for one big one is because if you're upgrading your rig you've probably already got a hard drive 
that you can carry all your old games across from anyway. And if you're new to PC gaming, well, you won't really have a big catalogue to fill up that with anyway. So what is the point of getting a hard drive with space you don't need when you could get one hard drive that is a super fast one and it will blitz through all your games, loading times pretty much gone, and of course your general OS will be a lot better and I think you'd be better off just with going for this one big SSD. And of course the last thing is a copy of Windows. Windows 8 is my operating system of preference, 8 or 8.1, depends what you can get cheaper. 8 automatically upgrades to 8.1, you just need to download the update, so whatever you can get cheaper, bang it on. Remember that this doesn't have a optical drive, so you'll need to get a USB. If you don't know how to do that, simple Google will tell you how to do that. So that's the rig. It costs £857 here in the UK. Prices is from Part Picker. If you live in the US, then it costs $1,145. Again, those prices taken from Part Picker. If you want to know more, click on the link in the description below. That is the Part Picker one, and it will take you to a list of all the components and Part Picker automatically finds the best prices. So it should be quite easy for you to have a look at the rig, mess about with it, add your own stuff, and obviously if you're thinking about doing it, go ahead and get into PC gaming with this rig. So what do you think? Leave any comments below. What do you think of the rig? Do you think it's been done well? Do you think it's not been done well? Do you think the SSD makes me a, a nutcase? What do you think? Leave all your comments below. Don't forget to give the video a like if you thought, yes, I like this. If you thought, no, I don't like this, have a guess what you need to do. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this and others on PCs, gaming and technology. The lighting is keep going in and out of clouds, it's a sunny day, I'm kind of, yeah. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.